So, and I think the way that this went is that there's two washers. This looks vaguely like some type of pressurized washer because it's wavy. And I think the way that this thing goes on is that this goes on first and then the washer itself and then um, then this goes on like so I believe and then this goes up there's a little bit of grass that got on here and this goes through here like so so basically I believe it goes on like that So that's it. And the next thing to take out is the uh, starter. And the next thing to take out is the uh, starter idler gear and the shaft itself. So that goes in here like so. So that's what these pieces are. And then the next piece to take out is the actual uh, starter gear itself. And to take that out you have to have a holder tool which we should be able to use the one that we have and we'll find that out here in just a little bit. Alright so the next part is is to be able to hold this thing so and this is really kind of a two-person job. We actually use this holder that Mitch built, and all what it is is just a couple of pieces of metal here with uh, one thing that allows it to pivot, and then a couple bolts here, as you can see, uh, just at the end. And they're small enough to be able to fit in these holes here. Now, they don't have a whole lot to fit in, so you just have to make sure that somebody holds this in while another person tries to turn the middle part uh, with a uh, 14 millimeter. And that's what we just did. We actually just... Um, did, did it off camera so that way when when we we can have somebody film it so but anyway just righty tighty lefty loosey it's just the regular way but just hold it and uh, that's it and then this part will come off and it's on there pretty tight but not too crazy tight and you're good to go. This comes off. Now, all of this should come off as well as one piece. Now, we need it. Oh. There was a bolt there. So one thing that I was actually just worried about is how am I going to know how to put this thing back on so that it matches up correctly with the splines here compared to uh, uh, compared to where the crank is. And the key is is that or the reason or the way that you know how it goes on is that if you notice the splines on here, there's one spline that's like a double spline, so it it only allows you to put this thing back on one way so you can't screw it up which is a beautiful thing <laughs> so you can see here that this little mark this little mark right there has uh, has a, a space missing in the splines so that way you know exactly where to be able to put it back on so that you can't you can't put it back on wrong it can only go on one way and you just keep turning it basically until you figure that one spot out which should be about right there. It's pretty stubborn. And there it is. Now when it comes out there's actually a bearing inside here as well and that just sits in here and rolls around 
So you'll see that that bearing goes in there just like so. And that's just sitting in motor oil the whole time. So just keep in mind that that goes there and uh, don't forget about it. And this one seems to go, as you can see from the wear marks, looks like it goes right on here like so. And uh, it keeps it off the splines a little bit, I guess. Or it actually keeps that bearing inside there. So that's what that does. And also, I just noticed that this whole piece actually comes in and out. But I don't know if I want to take it out. It actually only lets it go one way. Exactly what does that, I don't know. And my guess would be that there are these things in here that prevent it, that only allow it to go one way. That might have been a bad idea. Actually, no. Anyway, that's how that comes off. But we're going to put this all back in here. If I can. I don't think there is, but one way it goes in. It's hard. I can't get crazy tight, which is not too bad. But it doesn't unscrew easily, I'm assuming.